All right, we're recording. Hello, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the third episode of The Delineation. Uh, my name's Cam White. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, as you guys can notice, at least uh, those who are um, watching this on YouTube, uh, you can notice that there's a lot better lighting that I have now for my videos. You can thank all of the wonderful patrons that support my Patreon for the new lighting and for making the video look a little bit better. Um, this month, or actually we can thank all of the producers of this uh, month. I finally got a nice little graphic for all the patrons that helped put on this podcast. Um, if you would like to support this podcast and the production of this podcast, um, go ahead and sign up to my uh, Patreon. You're going to get uh, early access to content, commercial free content. I got some other perks coming up too um, for some of the other tiers too. So um, keep that in mind. As well, if you would like to, if you might notice, uh, my audio sounds a little funky because in the background there seems to be a pressure washer somewhere going on and I don't know what the story is with that, um, but because I have a cheap microphone, it's gonna pick up everything. So if you want me to get a nicer microphone, um, become a patron and uh, we can get better audio quality on here and um, it'll make it a little bit more enjoyable for your ears. Anyway, um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys today. Since we've talked, a lot of things have happened. You know, Jupiter's now in Pisces, Mercury's now in Shadow. And the big thing that I really wanted to talk about today uh, is the, <laughs> and this is, I don't want to say, this isn't really controversial, but I think for, I think it's going to bring up some interesting points. But I really want to talk about self awareness in today's um, episode. I have a lot of reasons why I want to talk about that. Now, usually when I do these, podcasts when I when I do this show um, I've been really writing down like a bunch of notes and really trying to like structure it um, and right now with Mercury in Gemini and Venus on the north node in Gemini it's just not happening that way I'm really going to be rolling off the cuff here but um, there's a lot I, I do have a lot of points that um, I kind of want to bring up with this whole self-awareness idea the reason this all has really been hitting me has just been about um you know when you're an astrologer and you're, or it doesn't even matter about astrology, if you're doing any type of divination, if you are just living some type of a healthy lifestyle, whether that's a spiritually healthy lifestyle, a mentally healthy lifestyle, a physically healthy lifestyle, you grow in self-awareness. Each time you look at your chart or you try to understand your life in that way, right? Like you're developing self-awareness. And in this work, it's just really, uh, in this type of work, in the healthy living, um, and, 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 I, and I'm going to call this healthy living because it, if you were to rate yourself, right, in, in all areas of your life, physically, mentally, those are really important. We give a lot of credence to those in, you know, we give a lot of importance to those in this, um, in our society today. But spiritually, you know, we seem to, toss that to the side, even though that's that's also a very important part of the spectrum. But all of it's in, in a sense, like, you know, if you're trying to get involved in spirituality and, yourself, and understand yourself spiritually, you're, you're essentially trying to, you're living a healthy lifestyle, right? Like that's at least the road that you're going down. And in astrology, in this world, something that like, it's, it's just been so mind boggling to me has been the level of which you become self-aware. Um, you know, it's like when you are training physically, because right now I'm starting to um, work out more, pay attention to my diet. And it's like I'm becoming more aware of like what my triggers are with like certain garbage food. And I'm starting to become aware of like, you know, certain differences in my body and everything like that with. Um, and I think, too, I know I'm jumping around everywhere here already. and We're only like five minutes into it. But I speak, I think I speak for all the Pisces and the Sag risings, or at least the Pisces and the Sag placements of like this. I would almost even say if there's, I, I can't be the only one experiencing a level of like self-awareness of like, whoa, this is kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, when you're, when you're doing this stuff, right? When you're, when you're um, living the, when you're living the life, right? Uh, and I think just, and let's keep this to astrology here for a moment. I think too with astrology, um, something that's so incredible about astrology is like when you're really looking at it and you're really, or when I say looking at it, you're looking at your chart, right? When you're really looking at your chart, you get this level of like, okay, you know, for some people, 
when they look at their chart, they're like, I'm so confused. I'm so lost. I don't know what I'm looking at. Then you have other people that like are only looking at the bad things. And then you have like the traditional people who are looking at like, they're not even looking at the chart. They're like thinking of like dates and then like times and stuff like that. But you know, when you're, when you're looking at yourself and you're looking at your chart, it, it forces you to become self-aware. Now, for some people that's challenging, um, looking in the mirror is, is, can be quite difficult for a lot of people. Um, especially too, um, when it comes to like, you know, the 12th house topics, the stuff that we don't want to talk about, the stuff that we don't want to do, the stuff that we don't want to, you know, acknowledge. But when you're, when you're looking at your chart, there is no kind of like, there is no running, there is no hiding, right? It, um, there, there, there's this level of, uh, vulnerability that I, I truly don't think you get with most other mediums. And when I say mediums, I mean, even, I mean, stuff with like therapy too. Like I was just talking to someone about like how easy, like, I, I know I bash therapy a lot and I'm going to, we're, we're going to move on for that. But it was just something I was thinking about was like, someone was telling me, they were like, yeah, when I was doing therapy, they panicked and they lied. And they were like, just like lying to their therapist because they didn't know what to do. And I'm like, that's literally like, I've lied to my therapist before too. Cause it's like, it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to be that like, and, and it's also hard. Like dude, self, like self-awareness is so critical. It's so hard. It's so difficult to really look at yourself, detach yourself from yourself and be aware of, you know, and this isn't just the bad, you know what I mean? We're all, I mean, we're human beings. We're literally programmed with bad things in ourselves. Right. But it's also hard to be self-aware of the good. Like a lot, I mean, like I'm one of those people that struggle with that. Like I, there, well, I mean also too, there's the whole like, you know, you're either super good, you feel like amazing or you're like, oh my God, I'm worthless. I don't have any of that, right? Uh, when it comes to looking at the chart, you see the good and the bad. And there's a level of not only, you know, self-awareness, like, you know, for, their, for, for one, there's the self-acceptance part. I, self acceptance is is a, is a kind of a journey. Um, however, you can there's there's you can accept yourself, right? That's one that's one part of the path. But there's also just having to be aware of yourself. So, for example, a, a, a big thing that really um, brought this to my mind too, and this is something that's been uh, again a, a really big theme for me currently is just being self aware. Um, when uh, a lot of when I was quitting smoking cigarettes. I had a lot of people recommend, if I am not mistaken, Alan Carr's book. Um, I think that's his name. Um, I think it's called How to Quit Smoking Cigarettes Forever or For Good or something like that. I'm sure someone else will know in the comments. But um, the book got really popular for, for those who don't smoke cigarettes and, do, and for those who don't know this. The book's really popular because basically the whole book, he tells you to like smoke cigarettes while reading the book. And the whole time, the whole book is about like from what I, from what I've understood about it is like becoming aware of your triggers, becoming aware of how cigarettes feel in your body. I know that was a big step for me with quitting cigarettes. And that was years before I ever quit was just realizing like, yeah, this, the cigarette does actually make me feel like crap when you're, you know, at, when you're in an addict mindset, which a lot of people don't realize that they can have that attached to different, like it doesn't have to look like drugs or alcohol. It can look a lot of different ways, right? But there's like a certain addict mindset with a lot of, uh, with things and, and with cigarettes, it's, it's so, it's so, I mean, for one normalized in society, it's so common that like a lot of people don't even realize that even though they want it to make them feel good, it actually makes them feel like shit. Like I think the, the craziest part about cigarettes is when you you quit, you realize those were the things giving you anxiety. Um, I can't tell you how much pretty much like no, I have like almost no anxiety after quitting smoking cigarettes. But anyway, you don't realize that until you force yourself to be, become aware of the thing that you're doing, right? There's a level, like, you know what I mean? Like, so for, and this is why I brought up the quitting uh, cigarettes thing, because, you know, there's a level of which you have to, you can accept that you smoke cigarettes, you can accept, or accept that, like, you know, you're addicted. A lot of people don't accept that they're addicted, but you can at least be aware that those physical, that the, that, that chemical reaction in your body doesn't make you feel good. You could start to become aware of what your triggers are, right? And this is why I, I kind of define those two different things. Um, and that's, I think, one of the really difficult parts about astrology is like, because there's such this degree of self-awareness that comes with it, there's also this giant, um, I would almost say, emotional investment of a self-acceptance you have to take on. 
like you know um i I think, well, for me personally, how I got into astrology was I thought I was a cancer my whole life. I was, I'm born July 22nd, 1996. And I was, I, I read cancer horoscopes my whole life. And I was like, okay, like I'm sensitive. I'm emotional, but I'm not like that, right? And so I didn't know what to think of it, even though like I always thought the idea of astrology was cool. And then it wasn't until, of course, someone told me I was a cusp and then, you know, went down that whole rabbit hole, found a birth chart found out I was a Leo, and that, at the time, that didn't describe me, which I thought was really interesting. Like, I felt very shelled off. I felt very insecure. Like, I didn't feel very, like, Leo at all. And there was a part of that that I really didn't accept, but there was a part of that that I had to become aware of. And this is the thing when you get into astrology, when you get into your chart, like, there's going to be things that you're kind of like, um, what? Like, especially like the 12th housers, people who got like placements in, in, in weird areas, like, there's a certain level to where like you may, it's, you don't have to accept it. No one's telling you to accept nothing. Um, it's just about, can you be aware of that part of your life? Can you be aware of where that can come up. Can you see how that can come up? Um, and that process is, in my opinion, one of the most magical things about astrology is this level of self-awareness. So when I do my client sessions, for my clients out there, they know, they know this because I start all my readings off like this. I start all of my readings off with um, the concept of the natal promise. If you guys aren't familiar with the concept of the natal promise, it's pretty much like the idea of it is that like you have your birth chart, right? Uh, it's the idea of the natal promise is that all of your placements in your birth chart are going to manifest themselves into your life the exact way that they say that they will. It's the promise. It's going to happen regardless of, you know, whether you want it to or not. Um, and this is also kind of like one of the more foundational principles, I think, in like the traditional stuff. Um, and I noticed, too, a lot of people do annual perfections nowadays, which is awesome. They're getting really popular. That's great. Um, and, but I noticed a lot of people don't understand that natal promise concept, too. And I talk about this in my readings because it's like, you know, people will get like the whole Time Lord stuff, but it's like they don't understand what they're actually reading. And it's like you're when it comes to the timing of life, it's all in your chart. Right. But anyway. So I bring this up because with like my younger clients who are like my age, it's like life is like going around a corner every day, right? Like, you know, you feel a different way every single day. You're discovering parts of yourself you didn't discover. You're just starting to get to like your second side versus like my older clients. I love my older clients because it's everything in that chart's been activated, right? You know, there's that story's been told. Sure, it's been told a few different times with maybe a little changes here and there, but it's the same story, right? Um when it comes to talking to my younger clients versus my older clients, and I'm not, and this isn't any kind of, kind of discrepancy either. Um, I find that my older clients have such a level of self-awareness, um, that it becomes self-acceptance, right? Um, like versus I think a lot of my, I see a lot of my, and I think a lot of astrologers might agree with this or even, you know, the therapists too. And then don't get me wrong. There's plenty of older people, uh, middle-aged people that are completely unself-aware, right? However, I think as you get older, it gets more and more difficult to live your life unself-aware to a degree, right? Um, like ignorance is bliss, right? I know so many people that literally live in an ignorant bliss, but that doesn't mean that they're not aware of themselves. They're not aware of w what they're choosing. They're not aware of why they're choosing their path. In fact, usually the, the ignorantly bliss people are very specifically choosing a path for a reason. You know what I mean? Like they're, uh, I... I've yet to meet, you know, too many, like, again, it's mostly like younger people I see that can be like really challenged with the self-awareness self -awareness stuff too. Cause that's also just a part of living life and growing up and, you know, becoming a human. Um, but m uh, with my older clients, there's this like, yeah, I see how I can be, I, I, I'm aware of how I can act. I'm aware of the good. I'm aware of the bad. And I think with the self-awareness stuff with astrology, it's, it's so important because and this is also too when it comes to the natal promise, like being aware of how many ways that can look, being aware of when is it good, when is it bad, um, being aware of, you know, and this, and, and the thing is too, and, and I said good and bad for a reason, like, um, 
I think one of the, the problem, the biggest thing with self-awareness, and this is also a big 12th house topic. If you guys, trigger warning, 12th house talk. Um, the 12th house literally rules self sat Well, okay. So everywhere I've looked, every like I keep hearing this term self-undoing, and I I've I never heard that term before. And everywhere I've looked up, I would if anyone wants to do the research, please help me with this. Cause what I looked up, I couldn't find anything else with the term self undoing that wasn't produced by an astrologer in like the 20th century. So, cause I wanted to know what that term meant more. I don't know if you guys have heard of that term of the 12th house being about self undoing. Um, I relate it much more to self sabotage. Um, the 12th house is kind of this hidden house. It's this blind house, right? You don't always see what's going on there. And so I think there's this, again, this is also why this is almost like kind of like a 12th house uh, conversation at the same time. Having a level of self-awareness is difficult and seeing into your blind spots, um, looking past your own bullshit is difficult. It's And it's not easy. And there's going to be parts where you go like, um, and this is a, I saw someone, God, who said this on Twitter? I don't remember who said this on Twitter. Someone said that like, the 12th house year is the year you realize uh, like your problems and that you're the problem. Yeah, the 12th house year is like the year that you realize you're the problem and the first house year is like the re you realize you're the solution. And I think there's a level of that, I think, um, how do I wanna say this? Getting to the point of self-awareness, getting to the point where you can go, oh, maybe I am looking at things wrong. Maybe am, I am looking at things badly. And I think, you know, too, we live in, we live in a, an enabling day and age, right? Um, most social media is echo chambers. It's pretty easy to just kind of, you know, live a, lot, live a life unchallenged in a lot of ways. Um, of course, and that's not for everybody or that's not, that doesn't describe everybody's journey, but, um, I think it takes a level of confrontation to have a little bit of self-awareness. And I also bring this up too because and this is why I was bringing this whole up. I know we've covered a little bit now and only like 20 minutes in. But when Jupiter ingressed into Pisces, that was, um, I mean, I know I'm not the only one that was like, oh yeah, this is going to be good where everyone's looking forward to this. But everyone, it seems like everyone on Twitter was like, whoa, like everyone got really tired, which I was kind of not expecting. Um, everyone got tired. Everyone was just like, it just felt like goop is how I, I would explain every, if I'm speaking for the crowd, I feel like that's what everyone would explain how they felt. And what blew my mind during that is when Jupiter was in Capricorn for, or Jupiter was in a Saturn ruled sign for a year and a half, which Saturn was in those signs, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't realize how heavy of a weight you were or how heavy of a burden you were carrying until you lift it. And it was, what, what's crazy is like, again, the self-awareness that comes with a change of environment. I talk about this in my last weekly horoscope. If you didn't watch my last weekly horoscope, check it out. Um, I'd appreciate that. But I kind of talked about Jupiter and Pisces and it's an involvement with the environment. Um, you know, our ideas, our stories, our, our beliefs, they change with our environment. They change with our culture. They change with the people that we're in. Like, you know, Aquarius is like, we live in a society, but Pisces is like the, the cool parts. There are some cool parts of society, right? You know, sure. There's some bad parts, but Jupiter being in Pisces is, you know, we're going to, you know, we got to be aware of our environments, what's influencing us there, uh, influencing us there. Um, when Jupiter conjoins Neptune, there's going to be a big thing about media and what, you know, parts of media we consume. But I thought it, what was so incredible as someone also too, as like Jupiter is their time Lord, I'm in the first house year too. So I just feel, I'm like really feeling this Jupiter stuff. Um, it was like, how how the self awareness again? It's like when you've been. It's like when you do something really hardcore and you think it's not that big of a deal, but then you tell other people about it and they're like, "Oh my god, like that's awful!" And you're like, "Oh, what really? Like that's bad? Like I didn't know that." And then there's this kind of level of like, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't see it that way." Um, and astrology. What I love about astrology is you can look at your chart, um, especially the younger people. I think 
getting into astrology as a young person, I think is one of the coolest things because you look at parts of your chart. And I remember when I was like 18, I was, there was parts of my chart I'd look at. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this means. I don't know what this is supposed to symbolize in my life or because I don't really feel this way. I don't really quote unquote resonate with this, um, which I think is a really weird like, oh, I don't, sorry, I don't resonate with, like, the whole, I don't resonate with, like, when people are like, oh, I don't resonate with that, it's like, especially when they're talking about their chart, it's like, well, it's not really like that. It's not for you to, it's not up for debate. <laughs> it, it is, it is the place. I don't, sorry you don't resonate with your bullshit, but that's how it goes. Anyway, there's parts of your chart where you look and you're like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't know what that's going to manifest into. And then you go through life and then you see it manifest, you know, I got into astrology when I was like 18. And now at 24, seeing half of my chart get activated, all these placements, like, whoa, like, holy shit. Like, that all of this stuff became fully alive in my chart. All, like, I, and, and the level of, of self-awareness I think that produced is, is again, and, th and this is why I'm talking about this. You, you have to be self-aware in order to even get into this stuff. If you're trying to not be self-aware and you're trying to spiritually bypass with astrology, it's not going to work. You can spiritually bypass with tarot cards. Don't get me wrong. I love tarot. I love all forms of divination. But realistically, anyone can interpret anything the way that they want it to. There's... And that's the art of it, right? That's and that's what's but that's not how astrology works. There's there's a level of interpretation there, but there's also this certain level of like, this is this, and this is what this looks like. And this is the, you know, not super broad, but the very general range of things that it's gonna look look like. And there's gonna like, you know, there's like again, everyone hates parts of their chart. Like, I don't know a single person that doesn't hate their chart at least to a varying degree. And that's life. And we all hate our lives to a certain varying degree. Um, that's healthy, right? We need we need problems so we can come up with solutions to make life better. Um, I think that's what's also cool about humans. Like we literally look for problems because I, it's like you can have literally a, a human in the perfect environment, they're still gonna find an issue. I think that's cool programming. People are like, why are people so negative? It's like, we're literally looking for problems because I don't know, maybe we're bored and we wanna fix them. Maybe I'm just being too positive there, but anyway. You have to be aware. You have to be aware of, of at, or at least be hungry for awareness. At least just want to say, hey, what am I doing wrong here? You know, and this is the other reason I bring this up. I get this question asked a lot, and I've talked about this. I think I might have talked about this on, a, on one of the other episodes or on a video. I don't know. I talk too much to remember where I say things nowadays, but... I get a lot of clients that ask me like, hey, you know, how do I best utilize my placements and my chart um, to like my best advantage? And there's a lot of areas in life. Well, of course, like, you know, depending on the chart, you're going to go to a certain area, do a certain thing. Right. Um, and of course, the advantage of knowing astrology is having a little bit of hindsight as to where where that can go be where you can go what I like to say is like being at the right place at the right time um because with with the, with astrology it's going to happen either way you cannot be into astrology and the timing's still going to work like you can have someone who literally insists that it doesn't work that they don't believe it and get there if I got an accurate birth time like I'm like it's still going to work regardless if you're into it or not that's the cool part about it too um so there's this level of, so when people ask, you know, how do I utilize it best? It's kind of like, you know, there's no, uh, you can't manufacture, um, you can't manufacture things like that. You can't say, uh, it, it, you can, again, find your place, at the, find yourself at the right place at the right time. But what I try to tell people, it's like, just listen to your intuition. If this was already going to happen, it, so, uh, if this was already going to happen anyway, if the natal promise is going to get activated anyway, regardless of your interaction with it, then trust your intuition, right? Don't second guess yourself. Like if, and correct me if I'm wrong here, other astrologers, but in my experience, 90% of our jobs is just confirming people's intuition without, without saying anything. Most people will come in telling themselves a story 
and there's two stories. There's the story that their gut, that their intuition feels, and then there's the the logic rationale that tries to go, oh, well, what if it doesn't look like that? Or what if it doesn't? That's, you know, you have two wolves inside your head. One's this, one's that. Um, and you know what I always find? I'll, I'll, have, I'll have people, like in my client intake forms, they'll fill out all, like the whole questionnaire, and then it's just like, and they have all these questions, but then like because of the chart, has like not necessarily that has nothing to do with those questions, but there's other topics involved. And it's funny because they go, well, that's actually, I was feeling that way, but you know, I had questions about this stuff, but I was, had this stuff also going on in my life. And I just didn't know, you know, what to ask about that. You know, half of like literally half of our job is just confirming people's intuition, confirming people's hunches, confirming what already people thought was going to happen. Now, this is where the self-awareness comes really critical because if you can be aware that that voice in your head that says, oh, like, you know, and here, here's me being a Leo kind of gaslighting you guys here a little bit, but like that, that voice in your head that's like, oh, I, I, I can be great. I, I can do this. I can be successful. I can, I can, I can do this. I, 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 I can have that. I'm worthy of this. I'm worthy of that. X, Y, and Z. Uh, of course, there's those positive voices and there's also those negative voices too. Like we have to be able to listen to our gut instincts too when there's something negative approaching. Like when you got the bad vibes with per with someone, like you got to trust that. You know what I mean? Like our, our bodies are literally two million years or so in the making, right? I don't know how old we are, but like our senses have been developed over, like we're literally the highest functioning computer ever. Like in your senses are picking up for a reason when there's something bad. We've got to listen to that too. But that voice in your head that's like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Like, and this is the way I want to go. That's true. And that's the voice that's taking you down that path of your destiny, right? The other thing too is you you can't be into astrology and think that it is 100% a free will game. If you are into astrology and you think this is 100% free will life, you've got a lot to learn. You've got a lot to learn. This is, that while I'm a big person too of um, personal and self-responsibility, right? Like it is your life. Um, you, you, you do have control of the steering wheel. Um, you're not always in control of the waves, right? You're not always in control of the weather. Um, and you know, some people call that fate. Some people call it coincidence. I think I, I believe in fate. I think it's much more fun. Um, but how do I want to say this? You have to believe in a destiny. You have to believe that there is something and you know, that destiny could be good or bad. Like, you know, that's not, I don't think that's for you to not only decide, I don't think that's for you to necessarily understand. I don't think that's for you to judge either. What destiny is good or bad? You know, you don't, you don't know what purpose you served in life, right? Like think about that guy uh, in Pompeii who got like slammed by a giant rock while he was jacking off. like. In that moment, he probably didn't realize what purpose he served in this life. But here we are, you know, a couple thousand years later, enjoying that, right? Like you don't get to choose what your what purpose you serve. You can you can choose, you know, what path you go down, but you that's not that's out of your choice. And that's where, you know, fate and destiny really come comes into play, right? And when you get into astrology, you have to understand there's fate involved. This is this is, you know, if, if, of course there's free will, but this is, this is a game of fate, right? And there's, to go back to this kind of like a self-awareness thing, when you're listening to that voice in your head, that's like, oh, I think this is where I'm going to go. I think this is how things are going to play out. You know, it's, it's, you know, it feels almost like a fantasy. It feels imaginary. It's very dreamlike. Like that voice is real. Half of my job is confirming that voice. And this is also why I think astrology is much more powerful than any other type of self-development out there. Most self-development is just some asshole selling a book who really doesn't know much. Um, like this is like, for one, out of our control. This is out, like also too, like I know Myers Briggs is really uh, big right now, but I, I I think Myers Briggs is also like I can just lie. I can just change my answers every single time. Like what I can't change my birthday. I can't change my birth information. Right? Like that's 
that's magical. That's the, when I entered, you know what I mean? And there's a, like, you can't change the celestial atmosphere, right? But anyway, half of our job is just confirming that voice in people's heads that like, you can do this. You can go, um, this is where things are going to lie. And also this is the pitfalls. This is who you can't trust. This is, you know, uh, what problems are going to come up. And now the hard part is, I'm so sorry about the noise guys. I cannot believe how noisy it is today, but I knew I wasn't going to have a choice with that, with all of this Mercury and Gemini stuff. But again, become a patron and get me a new microphone and I can get some sound panels that would better dampen this place. Anyway, there's a certain, the self-awareness that comes with, you know, knowing your fate or at least knowing that there is a fate, the certain self-awareness that comes with like, Hey, you know that you have choices in your life and you also know that you don't have choices in your life. Um, knowing that you can make a difference, you can make a change and, and knowing where you can too. Cause that's the other thing. Like you got to know where, where you can do this type of stuff. Right? So for example, like the astrology is going to happen regardless, um, with or without your intent. Now, if you can add to it, that's great. But like, it's about being aware of what you can add to the, add to the mixture and not, you know, I don't want to say sabotage, well, sabotage it, but mess it up in any way. Like something like, um, you know, this kind of pours into this conversation of, um, people who try to help. Like I, the people, there's people in this world that, and we're all guilty of this too. This is not a, Oh, there's people like this. Like, this is what I hate about. Like we love to like cast everyone and we love to give everyone a label as if like that defines their life as if we're not all that label. Like we are all humans that share literally the same experience. We're all of the bad things. But anyway, we all, because we're all humans at times help people. We say that we're helping people, but in reality we're doing it for us. Like, um, it's and it's not virtue sig sometimes it's virtue signaling but it's this level of like sometimes people think they're help like they're going oh i want to help you so they do something and it's not even helpful for the other person like they're like like there's so many times where people like want to help me and it's like i didn't ask for your help there's no like and it's almost borderline disrespectful because it's almost patronizing right you're like it's belittling like i don't like i i didn't request this the fact that you think that i need help like says like you know, how you're looking at me right now. But when it comes to like this fate and this free will stuff, it's the, it's the same thing. You gotta, you gotta know when, like when someone's asking for help, you have to know when it's your, when it's your move, when it's your choice. Um, being self-aware, uh, and I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling you, this is being self-aware is, I know, trust me, I'm sitting here being so hypocritical of being like thinking in my head, like, yeah, I'm self-aware and I'm not, I, I try to be a self-aware person. I think we all try to be a self self-aware people, but at the end of the day, there's so many things that we're, that we, we still have a 12th house at the end of the day. We're still blind to things. Um, how can we better? And my, and this is why I'm kind of doing this episode is just like when you smoke cigarettes, um, the difference between making that change, making that conscious change, that conscious effort is being aware. Um, and especially too with Jupiter and Pisces, being aware of the environment. Now, this is a little off topic, but I wanted to bring this up because I've recently been watching this um, YouTube channel. I shouldn't say recently, I've been watching it a lot recent, uh, for a while now. The channel's called Not Just Bikes. Um, some of you might be, cause this is, you know, YouTube, some of you might be described. I don't even know what the guy's name is. Um, not just bikes has been, I mean, to the, the same level at which when I started becoming aware of my cigarette addiction and how tobacco made me feel is the same feeling I got watching this dude's videos and talking about like streets. So just for a little bit of background here, um, not just bikes, how would I describe this YouTube channel? Um, this is something very nerdy, very cliche. I'm really into this stuff. And I, and I, and I also think that this type of information is 
so crucially important for the pe- for the activists out there, for the people that want more community, like charge in their community or leadership in their community, that want more control of their communities, people that want to end the housing crisis, people that want to end poverty, people that want to end uh, global CO2 emissions. Like this is literally critical, in my opinion, frontline. Like this is what you need to be learning right now more than anything. And this guy talks about how here in America, now for my European listeners, you guys, you know, had the privilege of having your own land for hundreds of years and being able to develop it. You know, we came over here to America, took all this stuff. And then basically starting at about the 19, after the world, after World War II, car lobbyists, uh, pretty much went to the government and said, hey, uh, we want you to really design our the suburban like suburban environments around cars. So when you go to places like, you know, for example, like I used to live in Aurora. Aurora is a really bad example of like what not just bikes would consider car dependent suburbs. And this whole YouTube channel, he's got so many videos. It the level of self-awareness that like, I mean, especially for the Canadians and the Americans that live in suburban towns, I mean, like how he breaks down land use, zoning laws. And it's so simple. And you, and like ever since I've been in Vegas, like for example, Vegas has only been around so long. And a lot of Vegas is very car dependent service. So the most, there is not one part of Vegas that's really like walkable. It's not really a walkable friendly city. You have to drive everywhere. Like the only walkable place is, Fremont or the Strip, um, but everything is so car dependent because everything was really built up, you know, from the 50s and beyond in the, in the age of the suburb. And he brings about how when you talk about the so, for example, like when you go to a, a zoning laws and how many parking spaces a, a restaurant has to have for the restaurant, and it's like the the parking lot's bigger than the actual restaurant. And then, of course, that means, you know, it's more expensive. There's less tax dollars getting out of that because of the land use. Um, It makes the uh, city really ugly and it just makes things spread out and sprawl further, which makes everything more car dependent, which uses more fuel, which causes more traffic and all of this stuff. And what and again, Saturn's in my third house right now. So I'm like really just getting nerdy into like zoning laws. I've been like when Saturn was into Aquarius last year, I was getting I was like looking into zoning laws of like different cities and stuff because I want to like build my own place. But like. This dude's YouTube channel has lit, like, I mean, I walk around now and it's like, no wonder, like you can look around America and, and just from the zoning laws, you can understand every economic problem that we have, every societal problem, every health issue too. It's all, it's all literally mostly zoning laws. It's mostly us doing single family houses with gigantic setbacks where we have to use all of this room, do all of this sprawl that may, it puts, you know, it, it, it segregates cities. It, it, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's this, it's just so bad. And it, for me, it's been really making me think of like, you know, cause Vegas is not a place that you want to live forever. It's like, where do you know, for people, for example, um, Denver, uh, for those who live in Denver, like the Colfax area, like that's a walkable suburb that, that is, like what this dude would call a strong town um, or he's got a strong town series. I forgot how, it, how, how he labels his cities. But anyway, watch this. Watch this dude's videos. I say this because learning this information about, uh, again, climate change, zoning, like you guys got to understand this. We could we can do electric vehicles all day long, which won't stop climate change and, and it won't stop CO2 emissions at all. If anything, it'll make them worse. But we also have to understand that like our environment, like I can guarantee you most of the people listening to this podcast right now don't know shit about zoning laws. If you know stuff about zoning laws, I'd be blown away and you're awesome. But look into this stuff because this stuff matters. and This stuff affects you too. When you live in an isolated community and you can't walk places, right? And you're not actually in a community where, you know, there's, there's like, that's how society is supposed to be built. And the, the reason I'm riffing off on all this stuff too is like becoming aware and becoming aware of your environment. I talked about this last week in, or in one of my weekly horoscopes of your environment always wins. So choose a winning environment or at least, you know, you, your environment always wins. So you have to adapt to the environment that you're in. And so a lot of the times, and this is the sad part about like really when it comes to self-awareness is like there's stuff that you're doing. There's stuff that you're thinking and believing and actions you're taking that aren't even yours. 
Like there's so many thoughts today that people have that, I, and I talked about this in the past two podcast episodes, like they're not even your thoughts. Like there's someone else's thoughts and that's okay. We're like, we're humans. That's part of learning. But like being aware of like, what is your own original thought? Being aware of what environment influences you. And if you live in like the car dependent suburbs versus if you live in a walkable city, like there is a literal statistical health, mental, physical, spiritual difference that is like recorded data. It's so important to be aware of what's going on around you and what influences you. And like, you know, things that we can do, turn off the TV, right? Uh, I feel like everyone's really turned off the news and I think that's a good thing. I also think, you know, cable is just, com I'm so surprised it's lasting this long. Like, you know, I, I was blown away. I got, I had this TV right here. It cost 150 bucks. I bought it last year. I didn't even know I have free cable on it. Like Cox tried to charge me like 70 bucks for cable. And why would I buy cable? I'm a Gen Z. I got YouTube, but I just checked out and I got free cable already on my TV. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how they're still making money. Um, but there's things that you can do to change your environment, right? You can get off social media. You can, you know, and I talked about this last week too with the whole um, Jupiter and Pisces. It's like you can't sober up and still hang out at the bar with all of your, you know, drinking buddies, right? You, you, you have to have a certain level of, um, you know, even if they're like your best friends, like you just have to be aware enough to say like, hey, that's probably not my best move, right? Um, and, th and again, there's things that you can change to get rid of your environment. And then there's things that like, you should also be aware of that, like, you know, you can't change. Well, of course, people are aware of, everyone's always usually aware of the things that they can't change. But it's like, you know, for example, um, you know, the, the, like the neighborhood that you live in, um, the street. And again, the reason I'm bringing this up too is, you know, a lot of my viewers are, are young people. And I, while I don't agree that with every single stance that young people take nowadays, what I love is that we're, we're definitely going to be the generation that does a lot of changes. However, if we really want to make good change, we can't do what they did in the 70s and make all of these crazy changes with like, you know, um, I've been really getting into the um, keto carnivore stuff, just the low carb stuff in general. It's very, you know, there's a, a lot of stuff around it. Um, and I don't Are you guys aware of Ansel? Have you, are the people out there aware of Ansel Keys and pretty much how this guy is like, almost one of the sole reasons pretty much the diabetes epidemic is so bad is because of this guy. And he was basically like fat causes, you know, all of these diseases. And he pretty much lied on everything. He pretty much lied so bad that even after his lies got exposed, it was like, I, I might be wrong on this too, because this, but this story just blew my mind. I'm pretty sure how it went was like after he died, his kids found some more paperwork that said that he also lied on other studies that he said he didn't lie on. And this was the dude that like he put cigarettes in World War II rations to get all the soldiers hooked on nicotine, uh, replaced butter with margarine oil, um, uh, pretty much got rid of, said all that stuff was bad that causes heart disease. And ever since then, diabetes and heart disease have been skyrocketing since this dude's information. Um, I don't want changes to happen in this next you know 10 years like that where we rely on bad evidence bad science and that we're not just aware of things right you know we do have the power to influence and control i think as you know as we saw especially you know just recently like with how you know movements just start up all the time um we do have the power to change things but what's important is are you aware of what you're changing like are you aware of what you're involving yourself into. Like that's one of the, the, the hard parts about seeing a lot of these, um, you know, protest movements is I see a lot of people who don't even, they don't even know what they're like. They don't even know what they're supporting. They're just like there. They're not even aware of what they're participating in. And again, self-awareness, like again, I'm sitting here going to like, oh yeah, I'm a self-aware person. I think we're all sitting here going like, I'm a self-aware person. But in reality, we're not, we're, we're the people that are not self-aware. Like it's like, you know what I love? Um, this is why I love Seinfeld. Um, Seinfeld, those are the, the worst people and they just think they're the best people. And that's exactly how society is. Like Jerry, George, Elaine Kramer, they're literally the worst human beings, scum. And they just think they're like, they're, and they're just regular people, really, but they just think they're angels. And of course, at the end, 
they have like you know the good Samaritan law, the not good Samaritans, and it's like we're we're literally in, in my opinion we're literally all like that. Like there's no way we're not all am- amazing creatures. You know what I mean? But we have to be aware, and w- we have to, we have to be aware of what what environments we're in. We have to be aware of what is affecting us. We have to be aware and be able to take that time out and also accept that our environments are affecting us. Your what you're consuming is affecting you, whether that is through media, whether that is through food, whether that is through, you know, even someone's energy, just someone's negative vibes. Your environment always wins. Choose a winning environment. And a lot of people aren't even aware that they're in a losing environment, right? Um, A lot of people that, and you know, it could be the environment that you're in is the reason that you're being held back. Maybe you want to grow more, maybe you want to do more, but you're not even realizing that like, it's literally the people you surround yourself with or, or the place that you're in and you need to get in a different space. It really is all about this awareness stuff and it's not easy. I know it's like, it's dude, like what I, and this is, um, here's a good, here's, this is something that I wanted to talk also about. I think I'm going to talk on another episode about, um, but I just want to make a quick mention to, let me pull this up. I believe, oh, I don't know Diana's at name. Diana um, Rose Harper, um, she made a tweet. Of course, I can't find my note on it now. Um, She made a tweet about how like, uh, oh, I can't find it anymore. Um, Anyway, she pretty much made a tweet of like, you know, rather than trying to just like, jump right in and learn astrology like why don't you just get a reading like that might help you get a better understanding of what you're actually looking like uh what you're actually looking at and i saw on twitter the other day there's so many people who are like have been doing astrology for a while but have never bought a professional reading like i'm a professional astrologer i do this all day long every single day and i get multiple readings from different astrologers all the time for different reasons. Not only is it for something to learn, but also like I can only be so self-aware and there's going to be things that other people bring to you that bring to the table that you never saw before. And like, you might think you're aware of everything that you see. Like, I mean, my, I, I had a friend of mine, um, give me a reading and they, they just did it cause they wanted some feedback. And it was so funny cause they did a, a, a transit reading for me. And I mean, Transits are my are my life or my job, right? And I'm usually doing them for other people and for like the current stuff. I'm not always looking at mine, but there were so many transits that they brought, that they brought up that I was like, I didn't even realize that was happening on that day. Like, holy shit, how how was I not aware of that? Like, I this is what I fucking do. <laughs> so, and, and just realize that you know the self awareness journey is a never it's a nonstop journey. This astrology journey is a nonstop journey. Every single day we're learning, every single day we're growing, but you have to be, you have to kind of, you know, this is where you may not accept certain parts of your chart. You may not necessarily want to accept certain themes of that. And that's fine. No one tells you, you have to accept anything. That's not, you know, that's a complete choice that you make on your own, but you can at least be aware of, you know, like there's people, it's like, You can either accept that you might get in a car accident or not accept that. Either way, you can be aware that it might happen one day. You know what I mean? So put on your seatbelt. Um, I think being aware, I think being aware of not only yourself, but being aware of also too how you're looking at your chart, how you're reading your chart, because in astrology, and this is something we're bad at, um, which, you know, a lot of, we all, and this is one of the good things with astrology, right? Like astrology is double, it's a double-edged sword. It's, you know, it can be a, it's a powerful tool and we need to really yield, uh, wield that power very consciously and respectfully. But we can use our charts as kind of like, oh, like justifying, I mean, for one, a lot of people use their chart to justify behavior, their actions, which to a varying degree is, you know, okay and not okay. I think it's very circumstantial. But it's easy to, you know, not be aware of a placement and think it means something right and and not be aware of what that placement can fully entail. Not being aware of, you know, also too, not being fully aware of how it like really looks in your life. Like there's so many, like, you know, sometimes, oh, um, 
I forgot who I was talking to, but someone made a point of like, oh yeah, my Mercury is like, come, my Mercury is underneath the beams. And I was like, oh yeah, like I kind of always forget about that. And then it was just like this concept because Mercury is my 10th and 7th house ruler. And so it's just like those topics being underneath the beams, you know, being difficult to see all burnt up. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, there's this certain level of, uh, well, in my opinion, there's stuff that you can see and there's stuff that you can't see. And I think it's also, you don't, not, no one's really going to stick it out, not to stick it out. No one's really going to point it out for you. Um, in this day and age, most people are very afraid, I think, to, in one sense, say the obvious, but also to say what they want to say. I think people are also afraid to um, offend and hurt people's feelings, which is fine. You know, maybe we should be nicer. But also, I think in that sense, too, no one, like, it's kind of your job to be self-aware because really, like, in, I feel like, you know, back in the day i wasn't even alive during them but just kind of watching media it's like man if you man if you said something dumb if you were doing something dumb man people would make it real clear about it versus nowadays it's very um you know it's it's your job to be self-aware because everyone's going to gaslight you like if you're wrong people are going to agree with you if you're right people are going to agree with you um and i think it's your job to be self-aware right you know there's um you know i got i got a a, a comment that really kind of really did offend me because it's it's I don't like when people just use words just because they want to use the words but like I got called ableist because you know I said that people have a degree of self-responsibility and they are responsible for themselves and they're like you're ableist for thinking that and I'm like well that's a very strong word um and that's and they you know put it in this way of like oh I'm like a pick yourself by the bootstraps type person I'm like no I'm not I I'm really not the sad part is is mo, mo not most we're all victims of society like this is something too especially people who are um I hate to use the term fat phobic because that's a weird term but like people who are like aggressively negative about fat people right like you can be I think judgmental about someone else's like health in one sense but also like for most people, most people just judge like, oh, you know, this person's just fat because they just eat. It's like when you really learn about nutrition and you kind of learn about like the diabetes epidemic and all this stuff, like you really realize like most of these people are victims. Like I used to think, I used to be very judgmental about like um, when I would see kids who were fat, especially like, um, you know, minority kids that were fat. Because it, it, when, you, when, you, when you're in the world and you see that, it doesn't make sense, right? But then... When you start understanding, you know, food deserts and you start understanding, you know, how, you know, when you go to those areas, it's only fast food and poverty, like as someone like who's like, dude, fast food is really like the only meal that you can really get with, it, with poverty, too. So and, and then you see the, the, these fat kids and it's like it's not even their fault. Like it's and, and so this is and to go back to this, this, this ableist comics, this, this, this is this offended me, you know. You have to be aware of what where your limits are. You have to be aware of what you can't do. I'm not saying like I don't like the people that are like, oh, everything's like your fault. Um, you're in you're in control of where you can go. Of course, like I said, like if you're in a ship in the ocean, you can take that bitch anywhere. That doesn't mean that a, a wave isn't gonna come crashing down on you, or some you know storm is gonna shoot you off in a direction that you didn't think that you were gonna go in. You know, and, and, and so, but to think that you, but the people who, there's so many people that think that they're, that it's like they're sitting in their boat and the steering wheel's right there. And it's like, they're like, and it's not even, it's not even a, it's like they're waiting for the, the, the wind to push in the right direction. It's like, you know, if the wind's not going to go in the right direction, you gotta, you gotta know what you can do and when you can do it. Right. Um, it's your responsibility to make that call. You can't just sit in that ship in the middle of the ocean and just wait. Like, I mean, you can actually, you know what? I lied. You can't because I, I, you can live any type of lifestyle. I think people are very judgmental on the type, like if you like, you know, if people want to live the super healthy, be a millionaire, change the world lifestyle, go for it. If you just want to honestly drink alcohol, be by yourself and not, and not talk to people, you have more than right. And that's just as good of a life as anything, right? Um, you have the right to do whatever you want as a human being. But when it comes to saying, 
I'm the type of person, and I think also too, I don't think we're in astrology. I don't think we're in this community, in this environment, because we're not looking to make a difference in our lives. We, it's, we're, we're not in this because we want things to stay the same, right? We want this, we're doing this because we want things to get better, whether that's our relationships, whether that's our career, whether that's ourselves, right? But you have to be aware that you're driving that ship. And sometimes people head that, take that ship straight into a storm. And other times you can be aware enough to where, you know, I'm not going to go through that storm. I'm going to go, I'm going to change directions. I'm going to go down a different route, but it's your job to be aware of that. And that self-awareness with astrology is so, I think is so critical. And I, well, I also, not only, not, not only is it critical, but I think it's this, why I open this up too with this concept of the natal promise. Um, the natal promise is, you know, that all my trad chads know, like they're, that the natal promise is the natal promise. There ain't no change in that, right? That's 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 the ultimate journey. Um, what you get out if you're gonna go to a concert, you know, let's say if you go to a festival, and not every single person that you love in the world is on that lineup, are you going to not try to go out of your way and enjoy the good people that you see during that festival? Are you only gonna go and you know, pretty much go where the crowd takes you and go to all the shows that you don't want to see or all the bands that you do want to see, or are you going to try to get out of your way and go see, make sure you go and see the shows that you want to go and see. Like, and the self-awareness stuff is, um, I think the whole reason I kind of brought up this episode is that in the astrology, it's really easy to get tied up into not only the past, but it's also easy to get tied up into the future. And I think in this moment, it's super important to just be present and to be aware of yourself and go, okay, what's next for me? Okay, what am I looking at here? Like Diana said, I I could not agree more. If you really want to get into astrology, go and buy a reading. Let someone else read your chart. There's there's things that you think that you're fully aware of and you're not. And that's okay. That's that's part of life. Um, But it's your job to be aware of that. It's your job to, um, you know, just you know <laughs> this is how I feel with my fucking car. I've had so many car issues lately. And it's like my car, it wasn't dinging any lights. And Vicky's usually pretty good about sending me some lights when she has a problem. But she wasn't sending me lights. And it's like, and I know she's got a problem. It's like I can wait for my car to tell me that there's a problem when it's too late, or I can just take it in the mechanic shop and handle it anyway, right? It's my job to be aware that that issue is happening. Um, you can check out of things. There's nothing, I think, especially too. When we get to Jupiter conjoining Neptune later on, um, I don't know, this is, I know we're kind of like a little bit deep in this episode now, for all the astrologers that are still listening to this, there's a Mars-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius, just about the same time Jupiter conjoins Neptune, or a little bit before, and of course, the last time we had Mars conjoining Saturn in Aquarius was lockdown, so I think there's going to be kind of a varying degree of that coming back, but I also have been looking at this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction as like, I truly think regardless, I mean, we can have a third deadly wave and COVID can get dramatically worse. I truly think people are just going to start to check out. And I mean, is that not what happened after the Spanish flu, roaring 20s, everyone just wanted to party? I think I think a lot of people are just going to check out. And that's, and that's totally fine. I think, though, that it takes a certain level of self... Like, this is why I like... Um, oh. Amish people, Amish people, they're like, yeah, when, when, in Amish people, I, oh, what is it called? It's they, it's like when you turn 16 or 17 or 18, they go out and they like get like a, like a week or like a month to explore the world to see if they want to do it. And most people come back because they like the Amish people, they know what's out there. And they're like, yeah, we're going to choose this anyway. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Same thing with the people. By the time, with all of the crazy stuff that we got going on this year and just the 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 absolute mental nightmare it is to be consciously a lot, like the people that just check out, like, hey, more power to you. But you have to have awareness of like, you know, because there's people that are so not self-aware that they're just so influenced by everything in their environment and they're not even realizing that they're like choosing into that once they're aware it's like oh once you're aware that the friends that you're hanging out with are actually toxic as shit and the reason why you're doing all this garbage shit it's like once you become aware of that then you can find the solution you know and this again you can also it's the self-awareness thing is 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 very 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 important 
and the self-awareness is also critical too if you want to if you want to like check out if you want to you know um the reason i kind of brought this jupiter neptune thing is like with jupiter and pisces uh, the grass i think jupiter and sag is the grass is greener on the other side and i think jupiter and pisces is like well we're here now so what do we so what do we do with it um and as we get just a little bit of taste into 2022 because that's what's going on right now ask yourself you know what's going on in your environment what are you being influenced by and what are you aware of are you aware of your mind how does your brain feel are what ways are you thinking you know my sister um my sister uh she's sober um she, she's an alcoholic and um, we were talking about because we're, we're, you know, all of our family's addicts. And at, at a certain point, you just joke about it um, like most addict families. But um, well, she was talking about because she was she lives with my like mom right now and she is getting this like fucking addiction with jelly. And she's like eating that shit out of a spoonful. And then she goes, she went, my mom was in the living room. My sister went to go walk by and she like hid the jelly like as she like walked to take the jelly in her room. And my mom was like did you just try to sneak like jelly past me? And it was just like one of those things of like, oh yeah, whoops. Like that you, you, you have no, it's, it can creep and crawl out of anywhere. You gotta be self-aware of that type of stuff, right? Like, you know, that's what's so funny about the, like the, the addict stuff. Like the addict, when you're, when you're an addict, it just fucking finds a way somewhere. It, it, it always finds a way somewhere and you gotta like combat it. Like my, my aunt who is, I think she's got a gambling addict, smoking addict. She quit smoking cigarettes through popsicles popsicles all day all day she was eating popsicles um it, it, and so again it's just about being aware of <laughs> what habits you're choosing into what you're getting into and i think with this whole astrology stuff with this whole jupiter stuff what environment are you in what are you aware of and how can you get more aware how can you tune in with your body how can you tune in with your mind how can you tune in with your your, your spirituality too really i think with Jupiter and Pisces, this is also, you know, um, the time to be uh, not spiritual, but like whatever, like, well, because, OK, in the astrology world, people are like, are you spiritual? And like, I don't know, the whole new age woke spiritual movement is kind of just a fad. And I think spiritualism looks completely individual to everyone's lived experience. Right. That's the magic of divination. Right. Um, but tap into that. Become aware of that. You know, have faith too. That's the other thing with Jupiter. And this is what I talked about earlier. Like half of our job as astrologers is just confirming people's intuition. Just what 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 would change in your life if you just trusted that? If you just trusted yourself when you knew things were gonna be bad, when you knew things were gonna be good? What would change in your life? If you were that level of self-aware and also um, that level of self-accepting, I didn't talk about this much because I think also the self-acceptance conversation is honestly a really hard conversation for a lot of people. There's a lot of truths that people won't accept about them that are really good, but also, you know, really bad too. Um, and I think that's a harder conversation, but in that same conversation, I think, you know, how much do you really accept yourself? How much do you really accept certain, uh, truths in your life? And, um, I think astrology is there to confirm those certain truths. I don't think that doesn't mean truths can't change. Everything's everything changes. That's the number one law of the universe. Everything changes. There's nothing that stays the same. But what what is your what is the current truth and how aware of that are you and how accepting of that of you? Because I also think the level of acceptance that you take on that depends on the outcome and how much of that self-awareness you get. Because if you're fully self-aware and you know what's going on, but you refuse to accept it, you know, that's you're you know, if you were, if that, if you were going to take that with smoking cigarettes, it's like, you're going to keep smoking cigarettes then like, there's no stopping it. So I don't know. I feel like at this point I'm just kind of rambling. Um, that's, that's my episode for today. Um, Another thing I want, well, the, 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 the reason I, I really also wanted to bring this up too is just because I want to just make sure I, I got all my thoughts out on this was when you're into astrology and you're doing astrology and you're doing this, and I talked, I talked, I talked about this for a second before it's, and you can do astrology for a while without having to do much work in your life. But when you're someone like, you know, like a, if you're especially a professional 
it's in my opinion it's really hard to do this type of work and not actively be trying to change parts of your life like you know like for me it's it's gotten to a point to me where like i i have to change stuff about my health i have to live a healthier lifestyle it's so hard for me to live an unhealthy like physical lifestyle while you know um uh, in this personal development seminar thing I did, they called they, they, they did something called like the quadrants. And I forgot, I might be able to remember all four of them. It's like you have your spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional. Yeah, that's it. And you rate yourself on it as one to 10 on each one of these boxes or each one of these corners. And it's like, sometimes I'm a mental 10 and I'm a spiritual 10, but then it's like physical stuff is so low. And, you know, for other people, it's like they'll be a 10 physically, but spiritually it's like a three or a four. And, you know, it, how can you be healthy in one area and unhealthy in another area? And that's not to say like, what are you doing? Like, of course that's life. But I think you get to a certain point where when you're doing a lot of healthy work here, it pours into the other areas of life. And so I think you, it, for me, it's required a big level of self-awareness of as to when I need to, you know, say, okay, I'm actually kind of low on the scale here and, I need to learn more. I need to be aware of what my issues are. How do I actually enhance this? It's like, for me, my spiritual life has been going really well. I've been really tapped into my spirituality. And it's like, now that I feel like that's there, I now that I only see the good here, it's like I keep having more and more awareness of what other problems are in in my life. And it's like, now that that awareness is there, it, there's, 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 there's only so long you can really ignore it. And I think with astrology, this is the and this is the fucking truth with astrology. There's just things that you can't ignore. There's just things in your chart where you're like, like, um, I'm taking the STA, the School of Traditional Astrology, which is really great for horary, by the way, really good curriculum. And I was doing the homework, and they have this one question. It was and it was like it was a, a horary about death, and the chart was just so gnarly. It was just like you you can't ignore that. Like you can't not see that, right? Um. There's certain things in your chart that you just can't look past and that you have to confront it. You have like, it's, it's what an astrology really lays it all out. The good, bad, and the ugly in your chart. Right. And it requires you to have a level of maturity and to have a level of awareness to look at yourself through that lens, to look at yourself through the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, what are your good parts? What are your bad parts? And for other people, it's, it's hard to accept the good parts. It's hard to accept the bad parts. It's different for everybody, but I think the most important thing is like, are you aware of it? But anyway, I know, again, I'm just kind of ranting here. Um, yeah, live a healthier lifestyle, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, um, as much as you can. And if it's one thing I've learned about, you know, because I've struggled with weight my whole life. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't know that or think that about me. Um, but what I, if it's the one thing I've learned about spirituality, if it's the one thing I learned about, you know, learning about my emotions or even physical health is all of this shit is a journey. This is not a, Oh, at one point you're going to be perfect. Or at one point, especially if, if anyone out there is struggling with health and even addiction, especially addiction, that shit is a journey. It took me years of, I was aware of my bad habits for a long time before I ever fucking quit. That's how most alcoholics are too. Um, most people that's, that's how it usually is. It's a journey. You know what I mean? The thing is, you've got to if you when, you've got to understand that like uh, if you haven't read the book yet, um, the Compound Effect by oh, I forgot the guy's name. It's called the book's called the Compound Effect. It's a really good book. Pretty much talks about like if you want to get somewhere in life, it's literally one step at a time. You just got to take it one step at a time, and you'll eventually get there. And this spiritual shit, this, you know, getting your life together stuff. It is one step at a time. It is, you know, choosing to take that one. I think also too, that's a big thing of Jupiter and Pisces. Like, you know, Sagittarius is so, oh, we got to get to point B. We got to get to point B. We got to get to point B versus Sagittarius of uh, Pisces is like, what steps are you taking right now to get there? And not even, it's, there is no point B. There is just, there's just going. It is just the journey. So I think in all of this, you know, don't stop. Uh, become more self-aware. Um, find find ways that you can really just wake up is the best way I could look at it. And this is why I said watch that strong, that not just bikes YouTube guy. Like I have been so aware of zoning laws and you can just see, like after watching this, you just go like, oh, no wonder why we're in the mess that we're in because of 
zoning laws. And it's just like, when you find things that you can be aware that affect you. And I think finding that awareness is the key to making the changes that you want to. Um, yeah, I think that's what I got for you guys today. Um, I absolutely love being able to do this and talking to you guys. Um, if you want to possibly provide some topics that I could talk about in the show, become a patron. You can message me or you can post on the community board of, you know, maybe certain ideas that you have about a talk, see what other people think. Please let me know. Um, I'm super open to hearing ideas. Um, if you want early access, if you want commercial free access, as well as I got some more bonuses coming up later, uh, coming soon. I'm not going to at least like, a, I'm going to try to keep adding things on as I go along. Um, and also too, if you want better audio quality, become a patron so I can get my microphone set up that I want to get. And maybe we won't have lawnmowers and power washers interrupting the next episode. Um, for all of those that are listening on Apple, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, check out my um, YouTube at Cam White Astro, as well as Twitter, Cam White Astro, Instagram, Cam White Astro. Um, like I said, this, uh, I don't know how many of these, I think I'm going to be keeping to about two podcasts a month. Um, I think that's about the rate that I can do. Um, thankfully, because of these amazing patrons here, um, Chloe, Tina, Madison, Christina, Autumn, Jennifer, Leo, Astro, Lodi, I can never say that one, Mark Kamari, I can never say that either, Renault, uh, Tall, Serena, Sandra, Brittany, Melissa, Alexa, Henry, Eileen, you guys are all great. Thank you so much for supporting. Um, I have some more patrons too, but I didn't get to update it with the graphics. So um, I think with that being said, I guess I'll be seeing you guys next time.